3.4, the chain rule. So this comment right here, differentiate the mother, leave the baby inside, differentiate the baby, pretty much sums up what we're going to be doing in this lesson. So stay tuned to see how to apply it. The chain rule is one of my favorite things to teach, but it is a little difficult to wrap your head around the first try. We will be going over it in class again, but this should give you a good understanding. So if we have two functions, f and g, and they're both differentiable, and we have f of g of x, f of g of x, we could also say f following g, then f is differentiable, and the derivative is given by f prime of g of x times g prime of x, okay? So this is the definition of the chain rule. I like to think of it, as this comic says, it sums it up very well, differentiate the mother, leave the baby inside, and then differentiate the baby. Now what does that mean? That means that we have some function f of g of x. And we're now taking the derivative of that. So we want to take the derivative of this. The derivative of this with respect to x is going to be the derivative of the mother function. This is the baby function. Take the derivative of the mother function, leave the baby inside, and then take the derivative of the baby. Now are you supposed to understand this yet? No. We're going to be doing some sample problems. Let me just quickly say in Leibniz notation if you have y equals f of u and u equals g of x meaning y equals f of u which is g of x y equals f of g of x and you want to take the derivative of it, so we're taking the derivative, same thing that we just did here, then we take the derivative of y with respect to u, because u is our variable, and then we take the derivative of u with respect to x, because x is our variable there. So let's go ahead and take the derivative if we have the square root of x squared plus 1. Now, if you want to break this apart and take it as a composition of two functions. What are your two functions? If we say that f of x equals g of h of x, then what is our g of x and our h of x in this case? Our g of x, well let's start with the inside function. We have x squared plus 1. And what are we doing to the x squared plus 1? We're taking the square root of it, right? So I have just rewritten this function as a composition of two functions. So that's why I have a composition of two functions, okay? So that's just kind of an aside. Let's go back to our original problem. f of x equals the square root of x squared plus 1. Let's rewrite this as x squared plus 1 to the one-half power. So we want to take the derivative of this. Let's pretend for a minute that this was box. If we took the derivative of box squared, wouldn't we get two box to the first power? So that's basically what we're going to do in this case here, except we have box to the one-half power. So we have one-half box, which is just x squared plus one, to the negative one-half, because one-half minus one is negative one-half. Differentiate the mother. We just differentiated the mother function. Leave the baby inside, we left the baby inside. Now differentiate the baby. Take the derivative of box. And that is our final answer. One half times x squared plus one to the negative one half times two x. You don't even need to simplify it any further than that. That is our answer. So now let's just do this question one more. 
more time. All right, so here's the baby. And I would encourage you to actually take out some colored pencils and kind of circle the baby so you remember what the baby function is and the mother function is. All right, so let's rewrite this as x squared plus 1 to the 1 half. So here's the baby, and the mom is the 1 half, the function to the 1 half power. Oops. So the derivative would be 1 half something to the negative 1 half, leave the baby inside times the derivative of the baby. That is our final answer. We differentiate y equals the, the sine of x squared. Here's a baby. Our mom is sine. The derivative is, take the derivative of the mother function. What's the derivative of sine? Cosine. Leave the baby inside. Then take the derivative of the baby. That is your answer. Let's look at the next one. Can we rewrite this as sine x squared? And I'm going to encourage you to do that so you don't get it mixed up because these mean the same thing. Now this is our baby function and our mom is squaring it. So the derivative is just going to be 2 times box to the first power. What was in our box? Sine of x. Take the derivative of the baby. So our answer is 2 sine x cosine x. So here's looking at the chain rule and the power rule together, which is kind of what we just did in our previous example. If you have some function to the nth power, well, its derivative is just going to be n times g of x to the n minus 1, n times g of x to the n minus 1 times the derivative of the baby, because here is our baby function, and our mother is some function to the nth power. So let's go ahead and try this problem. Now, remember I said I don't really like the quotient rule. If I can get away from it, I try to. So can't we just re-express f of x as x squared plus x plus 1 to the negative 1 third power? That looks a lot better to me. So to take the derivative, let's first identify the baby. Let's just box it. That's the baby. So the derivative is just going to be negative one-third box to the negative four-third, subtract one. And what was in our box? x squared plus x plus one times the derivative of the baby. What was in the box? The derivative is just two x plus one. Now I'm done. Leave it. You're done. Look at this one. We have a chain rule with a power rule, and we have a product rule. We have a first, and we have a second. If you can do this problem, you've really got it down. So let's try this. Here's our first. Here's our second. Within the first, here's our baby. Within the second, here's our baby. Let's take the derivative. We're going to take the derivative of the first. So that would be 5 times 2x plus 1 to the fourth power. Take the derivative of the baby. So that is just the derivative of the first times the second. plus the first times the derivative of the second. So we get 4 
times the baby. Q times the derivative of the baby. And that was the derivative of the second. So this is a fine answer. You could have left it like this. I would have accepted that. An AP exam would have accepted that on a free response. However, this type of question will probably be on a multiple choice question, and this answer choice would probably not be there. So I'm just going to go through the algebraic manipulation with you so that you'll be able to do that. So we get 10 times 2x plus 1 to the 4th, x cubed minus x plus 1, to the fourth plus what do we have four times two x plus one to the fifth times x cubed minus x plus one cubed times three x squared minus one now let's see can we take anything out here well i see a two in common and I also see a 2x plus 1 to the 4th power in common, and I also see an x cubed minus x plus 1 to the 3rd power in common. So let's go ahead and take that out, and what do I have left? I have a 5. Um, I have one of these x cubed minus x plus 1s. Um, plus, I have a 2. I have one of these. 2x plus 1, and I have 3x squared minus 1. So I have 2, 2x plus 1 to the 4th, x cubed minus x plus 1 cubed. Let's go ahead and multiply that out. So I have 5x cubed minus 5x plus 5 plus I'm going to FOIL and um, I'm going to multiply it out at the same time, multiply by 2, so I would have had a 6x cubed, so I'll have a 12x cubed um, plus 6x squared minus 4x minus 2. So I just FOILed and distributed that 2 all at once, and then if I combine things, I have 2. It's 2x plus 1 to the 4th x cubed minus x plus 1 cubed, 17x cubed plus 6x squared minus 9x plus 3. So that might have been your answer to your multiple choice. If you needed to find the zeros of y prime, that might be the only way to do it. So that's just some um, practice with algebraic manipulation. While we're at it, let's look at some exponential functions. This you must remember for the AP exam. The derivative of a to the x power is a to the x ln a. You must memorize that. You do not need to know the proof, but we can just take a look at it. a is e ln of a. That's equal, right? I just am using that so that I can replace my a with an e ln a to the x power. In other words, e ln a times x. So I haven't done anything yet. So if I want to take the derivative of a to the x, we can replace it here with the derivative of e ln a times x. And then the derivative of this is just going to be the derivative of e to the x. Let's use this as a baby, right? So the derivative of e to the box would be e to the box. And then I have to take the derivative of my box. So this is my box. So this is just a chain rule. So my answer is e ln a to the x times, what is the derivative of this? Well, ln a is just a constant, so the derivative of ln a times x would just be ln a. So this is a good proof to look through because we will need to take the derivative of exponential functions, but this probably is not the easiest thing to do right now, and we will be looking at more examples. Okay, so let's go ahead and differentiate y equals e to the 5x squared plus 3. So if we broke this down, we actually have e to the, here's my baby, e to the something, right? So when I take the derivative, well, the derivative of e to the box is e to the box. So leave the baby inside 
times the derivative of the box. And so that would just be 10x. So my answer is just 10x e to the 5x squared plus 3. And that's my answer. Now let's try and take kind of like a triple chain rule. Here's my first baby. But then within that baby, I have another baby. So we just start from the outside and we work our way in. So when we take the derivative, the derivative of sine is just cosine. Leave the baby inside, the whole baby. Now I've got to take the derivative of the baby. I've got to take the derivative of the box. The derivative of cosine is a bad sign. Leave the baby inside. And then take the derivative of the baby. And the derivative of tangent is just secant squared. That is your answer. You can just leave it like that. Maybe we should pull this negative sign out. Just so it looks nicer. That's it for this lesson.